hi friends okay you've watched that uh, video from when I was much younger describing this process called outlining for research and I really believe that um, even though this kind of process may seem counterintuitive doing the hard work of thinking through research projects and going ahead and doing your best to outline come up with a working thesis figure out what content points are going to have to be in your research paper or essay. Doing this hard work at the very beginning, I think is going to save you a lot of time and frustration later. So persevere with me for just a little bit, and I want to show you what I mean by outlining for research, and then give you an opportunity to try your hand at it. All right. So please note that the first thing that you need to do whenever you open up this template that I've provided is to open the file menu and then make a copy so that you're not actually typing on or destroying the template that I've created. Please note that you will need to be logged into Google Docs so that uh, this Google Doc will open up for you in your Google Docs and, and I recommend um, using your OC login to create an account. There's a quick video linked here of getting started with Google Drive if you're unfamiliar with that. You can get started uh, on this outlining for research. The way to do that you're just going to end up um, erasing some of the content that I have here and replacing it with your own. The first thing we're going to do when we have to start a research project uh, is think about our research at the topic level. Okay, And I think it's really important for you to identify three different concepts that are going to help drive you toward articulating a thesis statement. A subject. Who or what are you going to be writing about? A specific text. Sometimes it's an entire letter. Uh, usually it will be just a, a pericope or a, a kind of a, a piece of text that can stand alone, especially if you're doing uh, biblical research. And then you need to identify some kind of a concept to help drive you into that text in a particular way. A concept is a, is a particular way of reading or looking at a text uh, so that you can twist into the text or drive into the text in a particular way, hoping to expose something about the text. So in this case, uh, my subject is going to be Jonah. Jonah is a prophet, and my text, of course, is, is the book of Jonah. It's small enough for me to look at the entire um, book of Jonah uh, without that being too big. And then the concept uh, that I've decided to write about is subversion of the prophetic type or the prophet as a kind of character type through satire. I mean, you know that uh, usually when a Hebrew prophet gets called by, by Yahweh, by the divine, by God, um, who will go for us and whom shall we send? Well, the prophet jumps up and says, here am I, send me, send me. That's the typical way that a prophet responds to the call. But Jonah responds exactly the opposite of what we would expect from a prophet. Who will go for me? I want you to go to Nineveh and Jonah gone, fleeing in exactly the opposite direction. So actually, that's kind of funny. And a lot of times when we see characters behaving in a way that defies our expectation, we might want to pay attention to the possible presence of something you're familiar with, something called satire in the text. All right. So when I have these three concepts articulated, this, this kind of topic level idea, then what I want to begin doing is asking questions about those concepts. Now, you know all of our interrogatives. Who, what, when, where, why, how, if, does, can. All of those words are fair game for asking questions about these concepts. So we might ask, what? What is different about Jonah's call and response from other Hebrew prophets? How is it different? What type of literature do scholars tend to consider the book of Jonah to be? Why is Jonah hesitant to proclaim the divine message to the Ninevites? What's going on here? How is Jonah's portrayal a subversion of what readers expect from Hebrew prophets? Notice that I worked some of that topic level content into my question. Then I ask another question. How does Jonah's subversive portrayal offer a satire of the prophetic character type? And if you can at this point, sometimes you can't by this point, but if you can consider who does discussion about this matter for and why, then you might be able to articulate a significance statement. 
And I've given you an example of what that looks like. Um, in this case, the significance may be recognizing the satirical in Jonah reveals the text's interest in exposing resistance to divine embrace of the perceived irredeemable other as contrary to Yahweh's intentions. Okay, what I'm trying to uh, relate through this significant statement is um, an acknowledgement of really, so what? Why does this matter? What is the ethic that's driving or behind um, this particular way of reading the text of Jonah? What, what's going on here? So what? Why does it matter? Well, all of that hard work of asking questions and trying to think through what's going on here uh, with this idea will lead me to a thesis. And what I want you to notice with this thesis is that I've used a semicolon to actually incorporate one of my questions and some of the significance statement. The semicolon enabled me to take one of the questions and the significance statement and combine them in such a way that now I have a, a pretty powerful working thesis. Okay, so the thesis that has just popped out of all of this hard work of thinking through uh, the topic and the significance is Jonah offers a subversive portrayal of the prophet as character type. Recognizing the satirical in Jonah reveals the text's interest in exposing and critiquing resistance to divine embrace of the other. It's a nicely balanced thesis, and you can tell that I've made an assertion in the first half of this thesis, and then the second half of the thesis is pointing toward the so what of this thesis, of this uh, essay that we're writing here, this consideration of Jonah. Now, the next thing that you really need to do uh, is to think about, if this is my thesis, then what kind of content has to be in my essay? So as I think about content that the essay really has to include because of my thesis, then I wanna use strong verbs, not just bullet points, but, but, but verbal statements to um, try to describe uh, what has to be in the essay. So for example, I know that I have to do something in this essay. I'm going to have to describe Jonah as prophetic literature. Okay? I've got to give a background to, to Jonah and, and what's going on in this story. I'm going to have to discuss Jonah's genre, including scholars who detect satire or comedy. Then I'm going to have to relate probable elements of satire in Jonah I'm going to have to contrast Jonah to other prophetic character types like Isaiah or Jeremiah, for example. I need to show how subversion of prophet as character reveals a, a different kind of ethic toward outsiders or, or reveals something about Yahweh's, uh, God's own intention uh, toward um, these non-Israelite uh, peoples. And I'm going to have to explain the significance of recognizing satire in Jonah as opposed to maybe imagining that the text is simply uh, a strict historical report. Now you'll notice that coming up with those content pieces, they don't have to be in order. We're just trying to think through what does my thesis require has to be in the essay in order for me to argue or prove this thesis effectively. Now, after you've done all of that hard work of thinking, I can already go ahead and write an introductory paragraph. Readers of the Hebrew Bible are familiar with the prophet as character type, the courageous outsider living on the fringes of polite society who responds to the divine call with, here I am, send me. Jonah as prophet breaks expectations for the prophetic character, and reading Jonah's story as strictly a historical report may obscure a significant message. Jonah offers a subversive portrayal of the prophet as character type. Recognizing the satirical in Jonah reveals the text's interest in exposing and critiquing resistance to divine embrace of the other. This essay describes the satirical in Jonah and demonstrates how its subversion of the prophet as character reveals a significant corrective to assumptions that Yahweh is only for my people Israel. Okay. So what I'm hoping that you'll experience is that in short order, by following kind of the process that I've outlined here, 
you'll be able to move from a topic level idea all the way to an introductory paragraph uh, for the essays and the research papers that you will be writing. And this process will tell you exactly what kind of information resources you'll need uh, in order to support the arguments that you're making. I know I'm going to have to go find third level encyclopedia handbook sources on Jonah to help me understand Jonah in its context, Jonah as a piece of literature. I know I'm going to have to go and find uh, some commentary level uh, resources that help me um, present what's going on in Jonah, help me understand uh, people who may be detecting satire. I know I'm going to have to find uh, article level research that exposes some of the comedic elements in Jonah. This may also be talked about at the monograph or, or book level. So those are the kind of resources I'm going to have to find and I know that precisely because I've gone through and done some of the hard work of thinking through my research paper or essay before I start researching. And this process is called outlining for research. So you're going to have a couple of options in terms of a topic that you can think about. Uh, and I'd love to see you kind of go through this process on your own. Hey, it's not easy. Uh, but once you get the hang of it, I think it's going to save you a lot of time and it will increase your ability to write effective, well-researched, strong, powerful essays and research papers. Good luck, friends.